Saik succumbed to the water, and over the next days, each wave slowly bore his body back to shore. Meanwhile, Alcyon went each day to the temple of Juno to pray for his safe return. Juno heard her prayer, and taking pity, sent her messenger to the house of dreams to beg for help. In a hollow mountain, near the country of Sumerian darkness, lies a sanctuary, the house of drowsy sleep. Apollo's rays can never reach it. No rooster crows to summon the dawn. There are no doors, lest a creaking hinge disturb the still silence. In a center room stands a tall bed of ebony and on it lies the god of sleep, that gentle spirit that comforts a body weary of toil. Around him, numerous as leaves on the forest floor, lie empty dreams waiting to be sent to the houses of mortals. For when the gods have messages for humans, they send the children of sleep to appear in our dreams. Morpheus is the one who represents humans. He is the master mimic of the form, the clothing, the very stance of a man or a woman. His father said to him, go, visit Alcyon in a dream, take on the shape of Saix, be a mirror to his true form. Flying to her bedside, Morpheus took the shape of Saix, sea water dripping from his matted hair. Alcyon, do you not know me? The ship is wrecked and I have died calling out your name. Get up, shed tears, wear mourning. Do not let me pass unwept to the underworld. She awoke full of foreboding and descended to the shore, scanning the horizon. Far off in the water, she saw a shape in human form and as it drew near, she could see who it was. By the water's edge was a breakwater, built to weaken the force of the tide. She leapt upon it, running in despair, running as if to meet her husband in death. Suddenly, she found herself flying, beating the air with newly formed wings. She skimmed over the water till she reached her husband, folding him in her wings and kissing him with her hard beak, till he too rose from the water as a bird. 